when you watch these messes. And if you have your Bibles, go ahead and open your Bibles in the book of Job. You have Job, Psalms, and Proverbs. Turn your Bible to the book of Job, the very, very first chapter. We're going to read chapter 1 and part of chapter 2. The title of the message is, I gave myself away so you can use me. And we're going to see how God used Job. Book of Job, chapter 1, verse 1. We already prayed for the message. We're going to go straight to the preaching. There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job, and that man was perfect and upright. That man was perfect and upright, and one that feared God and hated evil. Chapter 2, verse 3. And the Lord, now this is God, and the Lord said unto Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? You know the story. That there is none like him in the earth. A perfect and upright man. Now is not the writer of the book of Job that is describing Job. Now is God himself giving us the definition, giving us, uh, explaining to us who Job is on his eyes. Have you considered my servant Job that there is none like him in the earth? A perfect and upright man, one that feared God and hated evil. And he still holds fast his integrity with this. Watch this. Even though you moved me, he's talking to Satan. He says, Satan, you moved me against him to destroy him without cause. Who brought the calamity upon Job? Bible says again, Satan, you moved me to destroy him without cause. Now this is verse number 9. Now his wife is talking to him. Then say his wife unto him, I you still retain that integrity? Curse God and die, she says. In all, all this, but he said unto her, Job, you speak it like a foolish woman, he says. And in all this, Job did not sin with his lips. And if you're not familiar with the story of Job, Job is the man that the Bible describes as someone that is upright, somebody that fear God and hate evil. And the God of the Bible allows him to go through a process. And the God of the Bible allows Satan to come and kill, steal, and destroy. And the God of the Bible allows all that, and Satan comes, and he kills seven of his sons and three of his daughters, and take away everything that he owns, destroy all his, his businesses, take away all his servants, and just take away everything, including his hell. A job was sick during the time of this process. But the Bible described a job a man who was honest, a man upright, a man that was full of integrity. And if you go to the King James Bible Dictionary, it describes upright as someone that is honest, full of integrity, someone that is erect, upright tree, a, someone that pleased the Lord, someone that is blameless, somebody that has principles of rectitude, a person who is living in exact conformity relationship with God. That's what the dictionary describes an upright and perfect man, somebody who lives under the guidance and respecting the commandments of God. Job was not a sinner. Job did not live in sin. Remember the book of Job, his friends came over to visit him and they said to Job, what happened Job? You used to be sitting at the gates of the city and you were giving advice to all that came through the gates of the city. You were lifted us up with your words of encouragement and now you don't even have a word of encouragement for yourself now that you're sitting on this pile of ashes. And the Bible says that when Job 
comes and he gets sick because Satan caused him to have sores and boils on his body. Some sort of pandemic came upon him and he sat on ashes. And three, four of his friends come to talk to him and see him and they sit also in a pile of ashes and for seven days they just sit right there and they watch Joe like they were say, doing six feet of apart like safe distance from Joe like today and they sit right there for seven days and they just watch Job on his calamity praise the Lord What was the reason that the friends of Job came to see him? They didn't really came to help Job. They came to see Job to convince him that he was living in sin. And Job was not someone that believed on the wicked doctrine that once you saved, you're always saved. Job was not someone that when he was at the gates preaching, he would tell the drunk, it's okay, you can be a drunk and still go to heaven. It's okay if you're a liar and you still go to heaven. No, Job was the man that was upright and he respect the commandments of God. If you were a drunk, God, Job will tell you that is wrong in the eyes of God and you need to repent. God, Job will give you a word that he was going to send you to heaven and not to hell. And we just sing a song this morning. We just sing a song this morning that talks about I give myself away so you can use me. Job really gave himself away so God can use him. And a lot of people look at Job, read Job's, and I'm going to ask you this question. Don't answer the question. Job lost his sons, his business, his servants, but watch this. He did not lose his wife. He kept his wife. God allowed to keep his wife that he kept his wife. He didn't allow Satan to kill the wife. And a lot of people could look at the life of Job and say, with Job, he was being punished by God. Or Job was going to a trial and a tribulation. That Job was being used by God Almighty. Job, he, he had the right to sing, I gave myself away so you, so you can use me. Because he was literally used by God. And you say, why was the purpose that God used Job? What he was trying to do, God, with Job. And God was trying to prove to the devil that it was somebody living on planet earth that would love God with children and without children. He was showing the devil, I have a man, my servant, his name is Job, and he will love me in riches and in poor. He will love me with money and without money. He will love me with houses and without houses. He will love me with animals and without animals. He will love me with food and without food. He he will love me if he's sick or he's not sick. He will love me with friends and without friends. And the Bible says that with all this, Job never blasphemy against God or his name. Even when his wife came and said, why don't you die? Why don't you curse God and die? You have no family. You have no children. You have no business. We have nothing. We have nothing to eat. You're full of sickness. You're full of disease. Curse God and die. How many guys would like to have a, a wife like that? That when your business is down, your wife tries to divorce you. That when you're sick, you're trying to get the wife tries to divorce you. And you know what? Ladies go to labor, gave birth to children, and sometimes the doctor comes and says, I'm sorry, the baby didn't make it. This lady had the right to feel like that. She not only lost one kid, she lost ten kids. Ten kids. She was upset. And don't know what to do. But Job knew what to do. He said, women, are we only going to receive the good that comes from God and not the evil? The Lord gives and the Lord takes away. But blessed be the name of our Lord. Amen. Praise God.
And the question is, why Job was chosen for this? And one of the answers is because he was the right man for the job. He was the right man. He was upright. He was upright. And I have this bow right here with crooked nails and one that is upright. And if you're going to build a deck, if you're going to build a house, which one of these nails are you going to use? Which one of these nails are you going to hit? Of course, you're going to take the hammer and you're going to hit the nail that is upright, that is straight. You're not going to use the nails that are crooked and they're bent because they're good for nothing. And this nail represents an upright man like Job. And God comes and says, I'm going to hit the upright because he's the only one that can handle the hit that is about to go through to show the devil that is an upright man in the land of us that loves me no matter what. Can God say the same thing about us this morning? Can God say this morning, I'm going to take the hammer and I'm going to hit that nail that is in Bluefield, Virginia. Amen. Which nail are you? The crooked one? Or the upright? Which one? We just sing a song. I give myself away so you can use me. How are you living? The way you're living today, the way we're living today, can God use us today? If Satan comes before God right now and says, Hey, Satan, where you been? I just wait, came back from Bluefield, Virginia. Can God brag about one of us right here this morning? Can God say to Satan, have you considered so and so and so that lives in Bluefield, Virginia? Are you ready to be used by God? Are you ready? You know, we go around on the streets preaching, especially today, this modern Christianity, this modern Christianity today and you find people on the street that say I am a drug addict but I am Christian I am a homosexual but I am Christian I get drunk on Saturday night but I am a Christian and you know what God is saying a Christian drug addict is not good for nothing and you say, well, I drum a woman and I dress in a mother's way and I'm full of makeup. Good for nothing. Well, I like to steal gossiping on Facebook. Crooked nail, good for nothing. Well, I still tango in the affairs of this world. I still looking for the political issues. No, your eyes need to be set on the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're one of these crooked males, you're good for nothing. If you say, oh, I'm a, homo, I'm a homosexual Christian, you're good for nothing. I'm a drug and I'm a Christian, you're good for nothing. Oh, I still like to watch pornography, you're good for nothing. Oh, I still like to gossip and cheating and stealing, you're good for nothing. Nothing. You say, well, brother, you're too hard. How about the lukewarm? The lukewarm Bible says God is going to spew them out of his mouth. Even this little nail that is not all the way crooked, it doesn't work. You need to be completely straight, completely upright, completely erect, perfect, so God can use you. And you say, brother, you're wrong. Because God in the Bible used a donkey. Correct? Book of Numbers, chapter 22. The donkey did not go through the everything that Job went. The donkey opened his mouth once to rebuke a prophet. Yes, God can use the donkey. He used me to preach his word. <laughs> Which nail are you? Which nail? Another man in the Bible. Joseph, remember Joseph? His brother sold him into slavery. 
They sold him into slavery. Praise the Lord. They sold Joseph into slavery. He got sold as a slave. And Joseph was an upright man. There was a wicked woman who tried to seduce him to have sex. And he refused to be a crooked nail. He remained. He kept his integrity. And for that he was sent to jail. But God was using that straight nail even in jail. The Bible says, but God was with him because he did the right thing. And later he became the vice president of Egypt. David, when Samuel came and anointed David to be the next king of Israel, Samuel came and anointed David's head and prayed over David's head, but he did not put the crown and say, now you're the king of Israel. He said, you will be the king of Israel. But before King David became the king of Israel, he had to take care of the sheep. He had to kill the lion and the bear with his own hands. He had to kill Goliath. And so his best friend was chasing him to kill him. When God uses you, persecution is going to come your way. Yeah. You don't think that it's going to hurt when you hit this nail? It will hurt. If you miss it, you hurt. If you hit your, your finger, it's going to hurt you. You say, well, that's just guys, examples of guys in the Bible. There is a lady in the Bible that was straight and upright. Mary, the mother of Jesus. Remember in the book of Luke, chapter 1, verse 28, says that the angel of the Lord came to see Mary, and he says, Mary, you are highly favored in the Lord's eyes. Mary, you have found favor with God. Just imagine that, you and your house, and the angel of the Lord comes to you and he says, so and so and so, you highly favor. The Lord wants to use you. You know, when you hear the word favor, some teachers at school, they have their favor students. Some parents, they have their favor, they favor uh, uh, children and they get different things than the other children. But when you hear the word, Mary, you highly favor, people immediately think, oh, Mary's going to get a good blessing. Oh, Mary's going to get a new house. He's going to get a new, a new this and a new that. But let me tell you what the blessings, how the blessings came to Mary. How God chose to use Mary. He was not used that. Isaiah 7.14 says, a virgin will conceive a child. Mary was already engaged to Joseph. They were going to get married. The wedding was already paid. The ballroom was ready. The mariachis were ready. The feast, the, the, everything was ready. The invitations were already sent out. And all of a sudden, Mary comes to Joseph and says, Guess what? I'm pregnant. Joseph is, I come. Because he didn't understand until the angel came and told him what happened. Joseph immediately, the Bible says, he wanted to divorce her because he thought that Mary has committed fornication, adultery. And he wanted to put her aside in secret because they were, he was afraid that the whole town of Israel was going to kill her by stones because in those days, if they were caught in adultery, they will stone you to death. So Mary was already, the, the whole town was trying to stone her to death. So the favor of the Lord came like this. I get pregnant and not by the man that is going to be my a spouse, they're trying to accuse me of fornication. Now they're trying to kill me for fornication. But I didn't stop there. Because when the baby Jesus was born, they had to flee to Egypt because they're trying to kill baby Jesus. So that's how Mary was favored by the Lord. Do you see where I'm going? Every time God picks the man 
or women to be used by him. He told Isaiah, Isaiah the weep, I, 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 Jeremiah the weeping prophet, Isaiah to go naked for three years preaching the gospel, using this man of God. My other question is, why do you think Mary was doing when the angel of the Lord came to see her? Remember what Job did every day, the Bible says, that he will burn holocaust in the name of his children in case that they have sinned. That means that Job was preaching, praying over his children, and he was asking God for forgiveness. What? Just imagine that picture that the angel of the Lord entered into your chambers, into your bedroom, into your dining room. What do you think Mary was doing when the angel of the Lord came to see her? Praying. Somebody say praying. I think that's exactly what she was doing. I think Mary was on her knees saying, Lord, bless my marriage. Lord, I'm about to get marriage. Lord, I'm about to start a family. Lord, I'm about to become one flesh with my, with my, with my spouse. Can you bless this marriage? And the blessing came by saying, you're going to be highly favored and you're going to be the mother of baby Jesus. Do you think Mary, Joseph, and Jesus and his brother lack of anything during the time that Mary and Joseph were taking care of Jesus? No. But see, Mary was not in the mirror. Fake eyelashes. Three pounds of makeup. Fake nails. Selfies. <laughs> Trying new high heels. And the new tight jeans and picture this way like that. Mary was not doing that. Probably Mary was praying. And asking God to bless her marriage. Mary, an upright woman. And if you keep reading the book of Job, you get to chapter 31. 31 chapters had happened, went by, Job lost everything. It, days turned into weeks, weeks turned into months, and it's a long time to be with boils and sores and nothing. And Job has been talking to his friends, rebuking his friends, letting his friends know, listen, I have not seen it. I don't go around sinning every day. I don't believe in such garbage that we all sin every day. He was not believe in that such trash. And in chapter 31, verse 6, Job, there's God. Look at the audacity and the boldness of Job to talk to God Almighty like this. He says, let God weigh me on the scales of justice and let God know my integrity. He's saying, Lord, put me in your scale. Weigh me. And if I don't have enough faith, if I don't have enough righteousness, if I don't have enough holiness, if I don't have enough uprighteousness, kill me. He knew that when God measured you, if we lack in of holiness, we lack in of faith, God will destroy you. You say, hey, God, you talk about God killing all the time. God kills sinners. God kills sinners. That's why I keep repeating that. Because God is angry with the wicked every day. So he sends that message to God. He said, put me on the scale of justice. And if I'm lacking anything, any righteousness, and if I'm lacking an ounce of righteousness, kill me. Let me get this boards. <laughs> Daniel chapter 5. You have King Belshazzar, a king that got wrong, and he used the things of the temple to get wrong. And as soon as he misused the things of the temple, the things of God, a hymn came from heaven, and he started writing on the wall. On the wall. And he wrote this message, Mene, Mene, Tekeo, Aparshin. 
and Daniel comes and translates the message for the king. The Bible says that when the hand was writing on the wall, the knees of King Belshazzar start going like this because he knew that he had done wrong. And the, and the God of the Bible writes the message, Mene, Mene, Tekela Parshin. And Daniel comes and translates the message and say, Kill Belshazzar, that says right there that God has put you on his scale of justice and you lack in righteousness. You're not having enough faith. You don't have enough holiness. And the Bible says right there on chapter 5 that God kill, kill, kill the king Belshazzar because he was lacking of holiness on the scale of God. That's why Job knew to ask God and say, put me in the scale of justice. And if I'm lacking anything, Lord, kill me. Can we say the same thing this morning? Can we say, Lord, put me in your scale of justice? But how are you going to say that when you watch pornography the night before? How are you going to say that when you can stay away from the TV? How are we going to say that when we're more worried about the election and other things and not the things of the world? The things of the Lord. Bible says this on the book of Proverbs. 13, verse 22. A good man lives an inheritance for his children, children, but the will of the wicked, of the sinner, is laid up for the just. And you say, what are you talking about, Edgar, now? There is a preacher, his name is Jonathan Edwards, 1700s, 1800s. He preached a good, he preached plenty good message. And there's one I love. The title of his message that caused him to be expelled from New England is Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God. Jonathan Edwards, a university came and did a study on Jonathan Edwards' descendants. An upright man, a just man. And his descendants, 13 of his descendants, were end up being the president of universities. 16 were college professors, 75 military officers, 80 public servants, 60 writers, 60 doctors, 30 judges. 100 lawyers, 100 pastors, three United States Senate, and one vice president. These are the descendants of a man of God, a man who fear God and hate evil. And they did a study on another family from the same time, the 1800, of a family who hate God and love evil. Bible says on Amos 5.15, hate evil and love good. For the life and the descendants of this man by the name Max Jukes, 310 died in poverty. 150 were criminals. Seven were murderers. 400 died being a drunk. And 100 and 90 prostitutes. And you say, what is this got to do with being upright and just? When you're upright and just, the scripture says, a good man lives an inheritance to his children, children, and the will of the wicked is laid up for the just. And I'm not talking about 
riches and millions of dollars and glory. I'm talking about leaving the legacy. Who was your father? Who was your mother? Is that man or woman that is six feet under was the righteous man? Is people going to miss your mother or your father when they die? Or are they going to be thankful that they're not drunks on the street? Or they're going to be thankful that they're not liars no more? Or they're going to be thankful that they're dead? Or they're going to miss him and say, that was a good man. He loved God. He loved the Bible. He taught me how to do good. When I was a little kid, my dad taught me how to steal. He told me how to be a thief. He taught me some good things too. But one of the things he taught me is how to steal. Bible says, book of Revelations, those who I love, I correct and reprove. So be jealous and repent. When God brings correction, take it because he loves you. Bible says in Hebrews, that if we reject the correction of the Lord, we're like bastards. Because a father that loves his children takes the correction. Which now are you? The crooked one? See, can't even go in. Which now are you? And you say, well, I'm just a little crooked. You're no good. God will not use somebody that is a little safe. You need to be safe all the way. Well, I still have problems with this, so that get rid of whatever you have problem, so God can really use you. Which now do you ever identify yourself this morning with a crooked one or with a straight one? And if you say, I'm the straight one, then get ready. Get ready. Because if you destroy now, God is going to come and brag about you, and the process is coming. God is going to hit the nail. God is going to hit the nail. Because we read in the beginning, who caused the destruction of Job? God. But at the end, Bible says that God gave Job double of everything he lost. If you pass the test, we have a faithful and just God that forgive of all of our sins. Are you ready to be us? Do you really think we can sing that song again one more time? I gave myself away so you can use me. Father God, we come before you in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. We love you and we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your word. We thank you, Lord, for your Bible. Thank you, Lord, for the examples in the Bible of men and women who were upright, and you used them, Lord. Lord, help us. Help us to get rid of those things that keep us crooked, that make us be not upright. We want to be upright on your eyes, Lord. We want to be used by you, Lord. And we know that when you decide that we're ready, you will use us, Lord, and persecution will come. But we will not blaspheme in your name, Lord. We will be like Job that says, the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. But blessed be the name of the Lord.